Alright, so let me move on to next question. Number six. Alright, this integration question. And yeah, I just assume you cannot see me. Uh. It doesn't matter. But then can you hear hear my voice? Or oh, you can't hear my voice also? Yeah, then yeah wait until the internet connection is good. <laughs> yes, I yeah, actually he says I have to stop sharing the video because because yeah internet correction is not so good. Anyways, yeah, just listen to me first lah. All right, so yeah, from here actually you have the curve. All right, so the curve over here you have the straight line, and you actually passing the point negative two and three and six. So the gradient of the curve is. 2x plus 2, find the equation of the curve. So it's quite simple. Because you, you already understand what is the meaning for gradient function. Gradient function basically means dy dx. So dy dx is 2x plus 2. Alright, so I say so many times, in order to find the equation of the curve, you will need to integrate the dy dx. Alright, and in order to find Integrate in order to integrate the dy dx, you will need to have one point which the curve is passing by one, which is the two negative three, because you're going to need the two negative three to find the values of c. All right, so from here, from here, what you can do is yeah, I will integrate dy dx. So yeah, so y will equals to integrate two x plus two. So if I integrate 2x plus 2, I have 2x power plus 1 divided by total power plus 2x plus c. So I simplify. Ah, I got no, no more integration symbol. So y will become x squared plus 2x plus c. Then in order to find the value of c, you will need to substitute your coordinate into here. You know your y equals to 3, your x equals to negative 2. Negative 2 squared plus 2 negative 2 plus c. So this is 4 minus 4 is 0, so c equals to 3. So if you got this, then I got my a answer, which is y equals to x squared plus 2x plus 3. This is my equation of the curve. Alright, after I have my equation of the curve, the question asks me to find the sh area of the shaded region. Area of shaded region will be very easy. You need to draw this one, come down. Well, this one is not so easy. <laughs> okay, so... First, you have to minus the area under the curve from negative 2 to 0. Then you will need to minus the blue color zone, which is the area of triangle. You're going to use the big triangle minus the green color one and then minus the blue color one. Of course, I, I need to know what is this value. So in order to find this value, you will need to know what is your equation of the straight line. Yeah, you need to form the equation of straight line. How come this one only give 3 mark and this one give 4 mark? <laughs> There's so many things to do here. Alright, so yes, you will need to find it, the equation of straight line. I find the gradient first. I have this one is 0, 6. So I will say 6 minus 3 over 0 plus 2, which is 3 over 2. Alright, so gradient is 3 over 2. The equation of straight line is y equals to 3 over 2x plus 6. Because C is basically Y intercept, which is 6. So I want to find an X intercept when Y equals to 0. Y equals to 0, 3 over 2X plus 6. So yeah, negative 6 equals to 3 over 2X. So X basically equals to uh, multiple 12, negative 4. So this value will be negative 4. Alright. Can use trabezium area minus the... Uh, you can't, because... You trabezium, I don't see any trabezium here. Because you want to find a whole shaded area, right? If you even draw this line to form the trabezium, yeah, you can do like this, use the trabezium minus the area under the graph. No. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Uh. If you use trabezium, in this case, it will be very troublesome. I will recommend you to use the big triangle, minus area under the graph, and minus a small triangle. Okay? So, I'm going to do everything together. So, I say shaded region will equals to big triangle is very easy. Just half multiple base, which is 4 unit multiple height. 
So multiple 4, multiple 6. I'm going to minus area under the graph. It will be integrate from negative 2 to 0 for my uh, equation of the curve, which is x squared plus 2x plus 3. Okay. And then I minus again for uh, area of small triangle here because this is right triangle so it'll be very easy so it'll be half it'll be half and then base is 2 height will be height will be 3 so times 2 times 3 okay so it will be minus the whole thing over here yeah, so, so here will be plus uh, <laughs> if, you, if I do the big bracket so that means I minus the whole area here so this one I of course I will solve it lah uh. This one will be 12. Minus. This one, I will need to integrate it. So it will be x cubed over 3 plus uh, 2x squared over 2, which is x squared plus 3x. Then substitute 0 and negative 2. And then plus, uh, this one will be 3. Then, yeah, you need to solve this one. So it will be substitute 0 into everything, you get 0 minus substitute uh, negative 2 into here. See, so negative 8 over 3 plus 4 minus 6 plus 3. Alright, so yeah, you, you should be able to solve this one very fast. So uh, let me solve inside the bracket one first. Negative, negative 8 over 3 minus 2 because negative 6 plus 4 is minus 2. Then yeah, plus 3. Okay, then I will get 12 minus the area. The area basically is 5 over 3. Am I correct? Oh no, I think I have to solve separately. If not, you will got some math error here. Because this is negative area, so therefore a lot of things you will get negative. So what I want to do over here, oh my god. I, I cancel this thing also. So I will say you, you minus this area, and this area I will modulus it. And then you minus the 3 also. Okay, so yeah, then yes, this is how I do. So with 12 minus the green color area. Green color area basically it will be negative 8 negative 8 over 3 plus 4 minus 6 yeah it will be 14 over 3 minus 14 over 3 and minus 3 yeah this is the right way 12 minus 3 minus 14 over 3 so yeah your area will be yeah the final answer for this one will be 4.3333 or you can say 4 and 1 over 3 okay yeah, this is how we find the area under the graph. Is that okay? Is my answer correct? 14 over 3. Yeah, should, should be correct. Okay, so, yeah, so let's move on to the section B. Okay. This one I have to use the graph one. I'm going to skip this one first. But I, before I skip this one, I will, of course, I will guide you how to do la. You can try to do it yourself. Your linear law is very easy. Okay, first, the table 7 will show the values of uh, two variable x and y. And by obtaining experiments, the variable x and y are related by the equation 2y plus 6q over x equals to p, where p and q are constant. So basically, you have the, over here, it asks you to construct a table for the values of x, y. So you, you will need to construct a table which you will have the values of x, y. So in order to do this, you have to, you have to form the equation with something to do with x, y. So what I want to do is, I roughly get the idea. That means I must have something with x, y. Yeah, construct a table for the values no, he asked you to do x, y. No, 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 you have to draw the another table for x, y only. This is not, this doesn't mean y in the step is x, y. Because I have to read b also. 
Plot the x, y again x. Yeah, you have to plot x, y again x graph using the skill given. Alright, so draw the best fit. So, you will need to find the value of x, y, then x multiple y, and then you plot all the coordinates here, and then you're going to, yeah, draw draw the straight line. But then, what you need to do is, normally, I have this one, I will always change into y equals to mx plus c. So in this case, my y basically is x, y. And my x is just normal x plus c. So I would, I want to have my equation some, look something like this. So I will take the equation from here to make it look something like this. So I have 2y plus 6 over q over x equals to p. I will multiply x for every single one. This is 2xy plus 6q equals to px. And I will make x, y as a subject. So 2xy equals to px minus 6q. So I will move the 2 to the other side. xy equals to uh, p over 2x. Divide 2, right? Divide 2 minus 3q. So from here, you can easily see my, from my equation, this is my y, this is my x. So p over 2 is my gradient, and negative 3q is my y-intercept. So over here, I know p over 2 is my gradient, and negative 3q will, my, will be my y-intercept. So you will need to draw the line by yourself, and then you can easily find the values p and q. Right, so I'm going to skip this one, but then, yeah, if you still cannot do, you can come to find me in my Facebook, because, yeah, it's going to take me a lot of time to draw this one, but I think it should be quite easy for you to draw it yourself. Yeah, unless you really need help. Ah, never mind lah. <laughs> I just do lah, since this is vir virtual class. Okay, let's do it together. So this is 6.0. This is 9.9. .9. This one will be 12.0. And then this one will be 5. 5 times 4 is 4, so it's, it's 14.0. This is 6, 42. 42 will be 16.2. 8, 8 is 40, 46 is 20.0. I hope my mentally calculation is correct. Okay, so then, yeah, I'm going to plot the value. Since all is positive, so I'm going to draw my graph. Everything is positive. Yeah, you can't see me again. Yeah, maybe I plot my graph like this. Okay, this is my vertical at is intercept x y. This is my x, and then I from there I know my x value is from one to a, so I will try to do zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a. Okay, six is over here. <laughs> Even I write my number a bit saying it. And then I will need to know what is the minimum and maximum for my x, y value. The highest value for my x, y will be 20. So I will need to do until 20. Oh, I have the skill actually. I cannot simply do one. 2 cm to 1 unit. Okay, it's correct for, for x exit. 2 cm to 2 unit on my x, y exit. Alright, so 2 cm to 2 unit. It will be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, just nice. Alright, so then I'm going to plot the things. Yeah, the first one is 1, 6, 3, 9.9. .9. Okay, I'm going to plot it. 1, I will go 6. 3, it will be 9.9. 9.9, .9, I will close to 10. Alright, then I'm going to plot the next one. 4, 12, 5, 14. 4 will be 12, 5 will be 14. Alright, then 6 is 12.2, 8 is 20. 16.2, 6 is 16.2, 16.2 I think is this one, and 8 will be 20. Okay, after I draw this, after I done this one, of course I will draw, I will draw it. No, I will draw it using 
straight line. So I yeah, I'm going to best fit my line. Yeah, just make sure it's as fits as possible. Uh, yeah, I think this one should be good. All right, so yes, this is how I draw my line. Okay, so after I draw my line, already, most of the time I will try, I will read my value. So from here, I will need to know my uh C, C which is Y intercept, isn't it? My Y intercept over here, my C actually equals to four. All right, my C will equals to four. Then I will then I can find my Q value easily because since C is four, so it's negative three Q equals to four. Q equals to negative four over three. Then I've done my Q. And then, of course, I will need to find my gradient. If I find my gradient, I will randomly take two points is on the line. So maybe I take is I take the whole number. Like I take this one and this one. Okay, this coordinate basically is I'm going to call it 3, 10. Because it's 9.9, 9 .9, 9 .9, right? So this one, I'm going to call it 5, 14. And then I want to find my gradient. I will use 14 minus 10 over 5 minus 3. This is 4 over 2. The gradient will be 2. Alright, since I got the gradient equals to 2, I can substitute my gradient value back into the, the gradient here. So therefore, I have P over 2 equals to 2. My P will equal to 4. Alright. Yeah, and then I find out I miss out this thing. What is the values of y when x equals to 7? Yeah. Then I will need to find my y when x is 7. So, if my x value is 7, uh, maybe I use, what color should I use? A anything. Okay, I draw, the, I draw a straight line. Uh, don't use green, you purple. Okay, well, x is 7. So basically, I will touch my x, y is 9. Okay, do you see that? My x, y, uh, my x, y is 18. So, when x is 7, my x, y will equal to 18. But the question asks, what is your value of y? So I will need to find y y will equal to 18 over x and of course my x my x is basically 7 then you use the calculator lah, 18 divided by 7 yeah you get 2.57 2.57 is the values of y all right so far so good yeah my camera is missing again Okay, is is that all right? Yeah, this is this linear law question is very easy lah. Normally the hard one is, yeah, they will use log lah. Normally when they use a log one, it will be quite hard. But this one I think is still okay. So yeah, so let let me move on to this one. Okay, it's given that W T equals to four cm. So this is four cm. The length of US is 15, U to S, art US, huh? here is 15. And the length of the art VXW, VXW is equal to the length of UW, UW. Okay, that, that means this length and this length will be the same. Alright, then surely the angle is 1.5. Okay, you want to show the angle is 1.5, so you're going to need some information. So I do not know here, I'm going to call here x and x. So in order to form, in order here, so what I will do here is basically I will substitute the value. Yeah, s equal, I will substitute the formula s equals r theta. My s in this case is x. x equals to 4 theta my first equation second equation i know my s is 15 right so 15 equals to r what's my r my r is 4 plus x is 4 plus x theta so i'm going to substitute my x into here so my 15 equals to 4 plus 4 theta multiple with theta 
then this is quadratic. So basically 0 equals to 4 theta square plus 4 theta minus 15. Alright, then I'm going to factorize this one. Okay, I will use 4 theta here. Here I will use theta. Here, you know, I get 15. No, I'm not getting the 15. 3 and 5. I'll get 4. Here is 3 and 5. 3 is 12, 5. No, I use 2 theta and 2 theta then. Okay, so I'm going to factorize it again. This is 2 theta. This is 2 theta. And then this one with 5 and 3. 5, yeah, 5 is 10, 3 is 6. So this one will be positive and negative. I want to get positive, right? So 10, negative. So your theta over here, you will get negative 5 over 2. Or your theta, you will get 3 over 2. Of course, we will, we, we will reject the negative value. So ne negative 1, I will say rejected. So I only take this one. So therefore, show that is theta equals to 1.5. Then you're right. Sean. Alright, it's, it's not so hard, but then you must get the idea. If you do not have the information, you can substitute whatever thing you want into it. Then it asks you to find the parameters, find the parameter of the segment uh, V, X, W. V, X, W. So, the one parameter of the segment, you should know segment is the whole thing here we call segment. So that means you will need to know uh, the art length plus the, uh, plus the VW. Okay, so I will say the segment for this one, the parameter, it will become the art, the art length uh, VXW plus the straight line uh, VW. Okay, the art length basically is the X. So I want to find the X, I just use 4 multiple 1.5. And I will need to find VW. This is 4 and 4. Angle is 1.5, right? So I know I can actually use the cost rule. But if you do, do not like the cost rule, you can use sine cost tangent to do it also. So I'm going to say this is square root 4 square plus 4 square minus 2, 4, 4, and then cost 1.5. Yeah, my writing is so terrible. Anyway, this is 6 plus. Yeah, I hope you can listen from my voice. La. 4 square plus 4 square minus 2 multiple 4 multiple 4 multiple cos 1.5. Make sure your calculator in radian because now we are actually doing the radian thing. And then I square root my answer, which is 5 point. This is 5.45. So the final answer should be 11.45. Alright, this is answer for part A1 and then find the area of the shaded region so in order to find the area of the shaded region is very easy the big sector minus the small sector alright so we know the values for x already right the x basically equals to 6 so here is 6 so the big sector have the radius of 10 so I will say shaded region equals to big sector with half r square theta Minus a small sector, which is half r square theta. Because both of them have the same angle. So I just do the things like this. Lah. So it'll be 10 square divided by 2, multiple 1.5, 75. Minus this 8, multiple 1.5, will be 12. Oh, not equal. It's minus. So it'll be minus 12. So your final answer should be 63. Right. So far so good. Why the internet connection today is so bad? Is there anything you want to ask? If no, we're going to move on. Okay, good. Okay, let's move on to this one. This one will be the geometric coordinates. Okay, it's given the equation of the straight line PS. PS is this one, equal to this one. Y plus 5X plus 2H. Alright, find the value of H. So, first thing is, 
I always change it into y equals to mx plus c. So, if y equals to mx plus c, it will be y equals to negative 5x minus 2, h. So, the gradient for this line is negative 5. So, if gradient for this line is negative 5, I'm going to call m1 equals to negative 5. This is m2. Because what? I see the 90 degree here. If I see the 90 degree means what? Means what? m1 multiple m2, you will get negative 1. So, that means negative 5 multiple m2. m2 is 7 minus 3h over 3 plus h equals to negative 1. Because the first one actually asks us to find h, right? So I'm going to solve this one. Uh. So I move the 5 first. So 7 minus 3h. The negative 5 move to the other side is divide negative 5. Uh. So this is 1 over 5. And then I move the 3 plus h to the other side. It's 3 plus h. So this is 7 minus 3h equals to 3 over 5 plus, uh, plus h over 5. Alright, then I group the num I group the number together to find the value of h. Mean h I group together. So this 4 move here. So I mean 3, uh, 3 negative 3h three I move here, it will be 3h plus h over 5. 3 over 5 I move the other side is 7 minus 3 over 5. Of course you can use calculator. This is 15. So it's 16 over 5h. This is 35. 35, 35 minus 3 is 32 over 5. So h basically equals to 2. Alright, it's not too bad. So if I know h equals 2, I'm going to substitute into this coordinate. It's negative 2 and 6. Alright, then we have to find the next information. The equation of the straight line, which is parallel to ps. Parallel to ps. Okay, we're passing through r. So that means you have another equation which is parallel to this one parallel to this one. So I assume they have the same gradient. And then you are passing, this line will basically passing through R. So parallel give us some very important information. Because since they are parallel, I know they have the same gradient. So the gradient for this line will be negative 5 also. So the gradient for this line will be negative 5 also. And then he passing through R, we can form the equation easily by using the formula y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. So yeah, I have the coordinate r. This is this is my x1 and this is my y1. So basically y, mi y minus 7 equals to negative 5 x minus 3. So basically y will equal to negative 5x plus 15 plus 9. 15 plus 9 eh, plus 7. 15 plus 7 will be 22. Okay, this is the equation of the straight line. Okay, we've done part 1, part 2. We, we want to do part 3. They want the area for ORS. So I'm going to substitute the coordinate. O definitely is 0, 0. So the area formula basically is half. And then 3, three coordinate repeat the first one. O is 0, 0. My R, my R is 3, 7. My S is negative 2, 6. I repeat the first one, 0, 0. And then I'm going to multiple one by one using the method we used to do. I mean 0 multiple 7, 3 multiple 6, negative 2 multiple 0. Okay? Then solve, therefore, area. Never mind. I will need more space. Therefore, area equals to half. And then this one, 0 multiple 7 is 0. 3 multiple 6 is 18. Negative 2 multiple 0 is 0. Minus... 0 multiple 6, negative 2 multiple 7, 3 multiple 0. So basically, you only have negative 14. So basically, you know you can sum them up. So equal to half and 32. So the area will be 16 unit square. Alright, very easy to get this 6 mark. So you just need to understand O basically is 0, 0. Uh, because in this case, that doesn't tell you what's the coordinate for O. But origin is always 0, 0. Then the next one. Okay, next one. The point, If T is the moving point such that the distance R from S is twice the distance from R. So over here, the question trying to tell you is 
uh, TS will equals to twice the distance from R to TR. So locus basically you just need to use distance formula. Whenever you see locus, whenever you see locus, you always link to distance formula. Alright, just remember this one. So I will need to do I, I will need to find this equation, but then I do not have the coordinate t. So what I will what I will do here, I will say t equals to x, y. And then I will substitute into here. So let me zoom in a bit. If you can't see, just let just tell me I will zoom out. So we know T TS equals to 2 TR. This is what this is what given by the uh, equation. So I will need to take all the coordinate and form my equation. So TS I have the coordinate s right. So I'm going to say use the distance formula x x1 minus x2 right. So plus 2 square plus y1 minus y2 minus 6 square equals to 2. Okay, then I do the same thing. So please allow me to erase this one. Okay, so yeah. Equals to 2 distance formula. So same thing, tr. Our coordinate is this one. So it's x minus 3 square plus y minus 7 square. Just solve this one, then you can get the uh, locus equation. So because both sides also got square root, so I will square both sides. So when I say I square both sides, this is what I do. I square here and I square the whole thing, include the 2 here. Because a lot of students will forget about square the 2. And a lot of students will do something like this. They cancel the square root, they cancel the square root both sides and leave the 2 there. Then you will got your answer wrong. Because when you square the because when you square the two, you will get four over there. Okay, so yeah, you have no more square root there. So this one is basically x square plus four x plus four plus y square minus twelve y plus thirty six will equals to four multiple this one. This is x square minus six x plus nine, and then plus y square. Uh, minus 14y plus 49 and then everything you have to multiple with 4 there will be a lot of things to write uh. I don't think we have enough space to write but I try yeah I will move everything here to the other side at the same time so you just imagine after you multiple 4x square you minus 1x square you have 3x square so we settle this one and this one Okay, then we see y square first. So 4y square minus 1y square, you got plus 3y square. We settle y square. Then we settle x. 4x multiple negative 6x, you got negative 24x. Negative 24 minus 4x again, negative 28x. Then we have a look on y. Negative 14y multiple 4, you have negative 56y negative 56y alright so here you got negative 12y move to the other side is plus 12y so plus 12y so basically yeah you minus negative 44y okay this is negative 44y you settle the y and then we settle all the number lah, basically so 9 plus 49 is 58 58 times 4 58 multiple 4 is 2, 3, 2. 2, 3, 2 multiple minus 36. So you will get uh, post, uh, positive 1, 9, 6. Done. This is the e uh, locus equation. So locus equation, what you always do is you just make one side equal to 0 and then you arrange from x square, y square, x, y and the last one is a number. Right? This is how we form the locus. Alright, so let me move on. What's the time now? 45 already. Okay, good. Let's have a look at this differentiation question. How many questions do we have? 11, 12, 13. Wow, still have a lot. I think I have a probability distribution until 11. So we have two more questions to go. Yeah, and then for the next week, I will cover the paper I mean the section C for this paper and the section C for the SBP paper. <laughs> okay, so for this one, 
because both is the ni 90 degree here and then this is the same length I know this one is parallel with this one and they are not parallel they're exactly the same so this is 4y so this one will be same with this one so this is 3y alright then the question says the length of the wire is 92 centimeter a piece of wire is banged to the form of a hexagon as shown in this one so the whole hexagon is actually using one wire and you bang it into the hexagon pattern so what I will do is I will plus everything so 3y 7y 7y plus 7y you got 14y so I know 14y plus 2x will equal to 96 uh, 92 sorry so basically 2x equals to 92 minus 14y so x basically equals to 46 minus 7y alright this first equation because I know this one definitely you will need to sub do some substitution alright then ask you to show the, the area basically this one in term of y though that's why here I made x as a subject it's because I know later I want to get the area in term of y if I substitute the x into it I have no more x then my answer will have will be in y so if you make y a subject and uh, later you have to do extra two or three steps to find the area so in this case because I want in term of y so I make x as a subject then I substitute in there's no more x already all right so so the this so I will need to find the this length is Pythagoras this is 5y it's very easy 3 4 5 so the air the area for the middle one is basically is x multiple y this is 5xy so area for this one is half multiple base multiple high so it will be half multiple 4y multiple 3y so it's basically the device is this is 6y here this is 6y here all right so the total area you will have is 5xy plus 12y and you have the values of x here x equals to 46 46 minus 7y multiple with y plus 12y alright so then you just multiple it this is 230 this is multiple 5y uh, 230y this multiple 5y you will get negative 35y square plus 12y Oh, so this is y square. Sorry, <laughs> it's not six y. This is y square. Twelve y square. Because this is area. All right, this is plus twelve y square. Then you will have two hundred thirty y negative thirty five plus twelve is neg negative twenty three y square. This area. All right, then I'll write short. It's just very easy. Okay, then. The next one it asked me to do da dy basically i need to differentiate this one now so my da dy 230y will give me 230 negative 23y square square move in front with multiple 2 46 y minus 1 become 1 uh, just like this oh it's just one mark okay yeah then hence answer the following question what is the maximum hexagon area so maximum area of hexagon maximum means d a d y will equal to zero so i will get three uh yeah i will need to find what is my y value so 46 y will equal to 230 so y will equal to 230 230 divided by 46 so it's five when y is five this is not the area this is the length y so i want to find an area i always need to substitute into my area my area is 230y minus 23y square. Right. Remember to substitute it back. All right. 230 multiple 5 minus 23 multiple 5 square. It's 575. All right. It's in terms of cm or what? Cm. Cm, CM square. All right. It's, it's very easy. You just need to know maximum or minimum means differentiate already you get zero. So in this case, I do dA dy equals to zero. All right. Then the next one. When the wire is heated, the y value actually change from four to four point zero three. You know when he heated the y, the, the length of y basically they will expand a little bit. So I know the change of y. We'll use the new value minus the old value is equal to 0 0.03. 
So the question asked me to find the approximate change in area. So the question want me to find what is the new area, approximate change in the area. So that means the question want me to find yes change of a. Okay, so what I want to do is I I will do I will use the rate of change. Uh. So change of a over change of y equals to dA dy. So therefore, I know change of a, I move the change of y to the other side, it basically equals to dA dy uh, multiple change of y. Okay, we have dA dy is over here. And then because the, the wire is start from 4, right? I know 4 should be my original value for x. I, I mean, in this case, it's for y. Okay, so it's a y change from here. So I'm going to substitute y into my d, uh, d, I, I'm going to substitute y equals to 4 into my dA dy. So it's 230 minus 46, 4. Okay, and the whole thing will multiply the change of y, which is 0 0.03. All right, just like this. So 230 minus 46 times 4. 230 minus 46 times 4. And then multiple 0 0.03. Yeah, your answer should be 1.38. Okay, yeah, this is approximate change in for the hexagon. Yes, so this one basically you just use the small change or uh, the formula of the small change. What happened? Is my, ans is my answer wrong? Is that okay? Natalie, what kind of problem do you have? If no problem, I will move on to the next one. Oh, the no is actually, <laughs> you type it just now, okay. Okay, so yeah, this one will be the last, last question. Okay, in the streaming training, it's found that 27 swimmer qualified to participate in the competition. Alright, then, yes, so 27, okay, is qualified to participate in the competition. So, over here, I think I lag again. Oh my god, this. Why is it so laggy? So many technical problems here. Okay, so can can you hear me now? I hope you can hear me, but the video actually gone again. Okay, now I just let me finish the last question. I think I have to upgrade my Unify because I'm not sure is it because my internet connection is so bad or or what or is it this platform actually is not so good yeah that's okay it's fine <laughs> my webcam is gone uh, again okay so have a look on this question in the streaming training is found that 27 percent of the streamer qualified to participate in the competition so if seven swimmers are selected at random find a probability that all the swimmers are not qualified so over here the qualified i know this is basically mean p 
So P will be 0 0.27. Q is very easy, just use 1 minus P. So Q will be 1 minus P. So Q will be 0 0.73. Alright, so in this case, since it's 7 swimmer, I know my n ba value basically equals to 7. So it's, if my n equals to 7, when they say there are no, okay, all the swimmer are not qualified, that means I know my x zero uh, x value equals to 0. So I will do using the for formula, I hope you remember the formula, it's something like ncr, and then p, pr, and then qn minus r. Okay, so in this case, since my n is 7, so 7 c 0, my p is 0 0.27 power of 0, and this is 0 0.73 power of 7. Okay, this is how I get the uh, probability. I use the formula to get the probability. So this one basically is 0 0.73 power of 7. Now you get the probability which is 0 0.1105. Right. Okay, if if the question one percentage you just multiply one hundred percent, this one I call eleven point zero five percent. If the question one percentage, but in this case no. Right, so okay, at least five swimmers are qualified to participate in competition. So if you say at least five, I know my x value need to be bigger or equal to five. Then that's mean I will need to find the probability for x equals to five. I, I mean yeah, it's five, I mean five plus the probability x equals to 6, plus the probability x will equal to 7. Not probability, like we find the probability x will equal to 7. Alright, so that means I have to plus all this, and then I will sum up my final answer. So I do the 5 one first, so it will be 7c5, so here will be 0 0.27, and then here will be r power of 5, this is 0 0.73 power of 2. Alright, then plus the next one, is 7c6. Then I do the same thing. 0 0.27 power of 6 and then 0 0.73 power of 1. Okay, plus 7c7 it will be 0 0.27 power of 7 and then 0 0.73 power of 0. Alright, so I will stop at 7 because I total I have 7 swimmer. If I have 10, 10 swimmer, I will continue plus until I get 10. And then this one, you can use the calculator. And then calculator will just tell you the final answer. So I guess your final answer should be uh, 0 0.01814. All right. Yeah, so you please yeah, ch check it out yourself. Yeah, this one is not too bad. Then you're going to move on to B. Okay, B will be a little bit different. So, a television company receives many phone calls from a customer in the days. Many of the callers have to wait until an operator is free to help them. Okay, this one always happens in Malaysia. <laughs> it's found that the waiting time is normally distributed with the mean 2.8 minutes. So, average mean, means mean that average the customer have to wait 2.8 minutes. And the standard duration is 0 0.8 minutes, mean it can be plus minus 0 0.8 minutes. Lah. This is the meaning of standard duration. So to improve their service, the company management have to decided, have decided that if more than 5% of the caller have to wait for 4.6 minutes or longer, or more than 4.6 minutes, they will hire more operator. They say more operator will be employed. Okay, so that means if if we find out, yeah, the customer have to wait more than 4.6 minutes, the company will hire more worker. If less than 4, I, I mean, if more than 4.6 minutes, you have more than 4, 5%, then they will hire. If less than 5%, they won't hire. Alright, because, yeah, so confused here. You have more than 5% and wait longer than 4.6 minutes. Alright, so, if the caller is children and random, find the probability that the waiting time is more than 4.6 minutes so it's very easy so i i will just do something like this i will say time is x okay time will be more than 4.6 minutes so i will solve this one so in order to change the x into a z i know the formula is x minus mean 
which is 2.8, divide by standard deviation. Standard deviation is 0 0.8. All right. The, what I'm doing here is basically the formula. La. Z equals to x minus mean over standard deviation. So x is 4.6 minus mean. Mean is 2.8. is given here and divided by 0 0.8, which is standard deviation. So therefore, my z value will be 4.6 minus 2.8 divided by 0 0.8 yeah 2.25 then if you got 2.25 this one basically you will have to find a uh, z value table which I haven't uploaded here okay now my just give me a moment I just take my z value table here Just very quick, uh, uploading the table. I think file should be quite small, so it won't take very long. Maybe it will take a while. I have two tag value table. Let me maybe upload another one. It will be easier. I see PDF, okay, PDF done. I think the pack also done. Okay, use this one maybe. Why so blur? Okay, so just now, we have the value which is 2.25, right? So we just find 2.2. Where is 2.2? This is 2.2. Where 2.2 is over here. So I will need to find 2.25. So I draw the line until I stop at 5 there. So 2.25, and then I hope you see the value. 2.25 basically is 0 0.0122. Right, then I will get the value, which is 0 0.0122. Okay, if 0 0.0122, because the question say if more than 5%, then only the higher. I want to know how many percent here. So what I will do is I will multiple 100%. So this one basically is 1.22%. Right, because in the second part, you see, hey, should the company hire more operators state the region? So you, you, you're going to say, no, the company do not need to hire more operator because uh, the com the customer need to wait more than 4.6 minutes is only have 1.22% which is less than 5% okay yeah you, you can write any sentence you, you find com comfortable but then yeah the idea is like this because your final answer get from here means the customer need to wait more than 4.6 minutes is only 1.22% okay the company's management say if more than 5% then only they hire more worker now it's only 1.22%. That's why the company will not hire more worker. Alright. Okay, let's let me move on. So, in a certain period of time, there are 500 caller. Find the number of caller who will wait the time between 2.7 minutes to 4.6 minutes. So basically, I will do the same thing again because they want to say X is the time. So the time will be between 2.7 to 4.6 right so I will need to change it to the jack score so jack score does mean I will need to minus mean which is 2.8 divided standard deviation which is 0 0.8 same thing to 4.6 4.6 and minus just now I basically will get 2.25 this is 2.25 oh the middle one will change into the jack sorry this one will change into the jack so this is 2.25 Right, of course I have to solve it also. So this one, uh, negative 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.8. So this one will be negative, negative 0 0.125. And then this is that, this is 2.25. Right, from here, in order to solve this one, basically you need to understand the diagram first. 
So I'm going to sketch out the diagram. Because now I have negative value. So if I have the ne negative value, so what I will do is I basically assume here is basically negative here is negative 0 0.125. 125. And maybe here is 2.25. Here is 2.25. And then the whole area I have here will be my probability. Just assume it touched the line up because I think here they doesn't allow me to draw over here. Yeah, just assume here include also. Right, so I will need to find this part. So in order to find this part, I my idea is I will going to use a total. Total is one. To minus the green color zone, which is to minus here and here. I will need to minus here and here. So Yes, so first, I call it A and B. La. This one is zone A, this is zone B. So A is very easy. A is just the probability Z will less than negative 0 0.125. And then minus again, this one is probability Z will bigger than 2.25. Because it, when it go this way, go this direction, it will be bigger. When the graph actually go this direction, it will be less than. Okay? So this is the reason why I get less and equal. All right, then for the part of less than, so what I will do over here is, let me continue here. So what I do over here is, when you have less and equal, and less and minus together, you can change it to the bigger. When you have less and negative together, you can change to the bigger and ignore the negative. Because they are, they are the same thing. Okay, why I say they are the same thing? Ah, okay, then maybe I explain it over here. Ah, it's so little space for me to draw. Maybe I explain over here. Okay, let's say you have both. Imagine they are the same thing. So, if less than, I say less than m, less than negative m, it definitely it will equals to more than m. They are the same thing. So this one is probability z is less than negative m. It will be equals to the probability z is bigger than m. I mean the area. The area of the shaded region will be the same. Because the area actually means probability. So this is the reason why you can change this one into this one. Alright. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So it will be minus this one. Probability z is bigger than 0 0.125 and minus this one we just find just now this one is 0 0.0122 of course i will need to find 0 0.125 then i use the table 0 0.1 is over here so 0 0.125 i'm going to see 0 0.12 and then of course i will go into the 5 here okay so therefore 0 0.12 is this value 5 is over here, minus 20. So what I will have is, I will have 0 0.4522 minus 20. So this is 0 0.4502. Okay, 0 0.4502. Alright, so I will get 1 minus, minus 0 0.4502 minus 0 0.0122. Then I will get my final answer. 1 minus 0 0.4502 minus 0 0.0122. My final answer should be 0 0.5376. But this one not yet finished because the questions ask you find the number of caller. Because this time there are 500 caller. That means you have 53.76% of the, of the caller actually need to wait between this time. So what you need to do last is you 500 multiple 0 0.5376 to find the number of caller who we need to wait between 2.7 minutes to 4.6 minutes. So with 500 multiple my answer just now, I will have 268 caller. Then I'm done. Alright, this is how to solve this question. Yeah, it's not really hard if you understand about probability distribution. Yes, then the rest will be section C, I think. Yeah, the rest will be section C. So the next next week, I'm going to discuss all the section C question. 
yeah yes yeah i think i'm going to end the virtual class soon yeah so you have any question you want to ask me before i end the virtual class i'm so sorry there's so many technical problem today yeah i i hope if you feel very light or somehow i'm missing yeah you can watch the re replay i'm going to upload the replay to the youtube so you can watch it yeah if there's no question i'm going to i i'm going to end the virtual class all right anyways thanks for attending bye bye see you guys soon